What's up you guys, Wesley Lindsay here, and I want to say thanks everyone for all your recent support on my videos. YouTube has recently become my uh, largest platform, and it's all thanks to you guys. I really wanted to do something special to celebrate this milestone, so I figured I'd do one of these uh, Draw My Life videos. I know a lot of you guys are new to this journey, new to when it comes to me, who I am, what I'm, a, what I'm about, and where I want to go on my journey with YouTube. So I think this video will be the perfect way to introduce myself to you all. This is really important to me because I feel like I've done a lot in my short 23 years, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. And I want you guys to know how vital you are on this journey and how I appreciate you all already. So here we go. I was born in the year 1994 in Indianapolis, Indiana. My dad's a police officer and my mom was a businesswoman. My name was going to be Warren, but my dad was able to m pronounce it, so they went with Wesley. I'm so glad they did. I was such a bad baby when I was growing up. My nickname used to be Destructo. I used to go in the refrigerator, take food out, bite it, and put it back in. I love Coco Nanny, which was toddler talk for chocolate. At some point, I grew out of it and became the sweetest kid you could know. When I was a toddler, we moved out of some apartments and built this awesome house. One time at that house, my sister saved my life when I was falling out of a pickup truck head first and she grabbed me by my ankle in just the nick of time. As a toddler, my parents noticed I had a talent for drawing on walls and graffiti their books. I loved Hot Wheels and dinosaurs. I can name every dinosaur in the book. I got Pokemon Yellow and had a purple Game Boy Color for my birthday. My mom used to drop me off at the daycare and I remember crying so much because I didn't want her to leave. Even as a kid, I had such a light in me. I became close to the staff of the daycare. One of the ladies loved me so much that she named her daughter after me. <laughs> as a kid, that light in me shined very brightly. I was a very bright and loving kid. I lived comfortably and had a very lovely family. Who would know that something very dark and very drastic would happen? One of the most dramatic events in my life happened that continues to shape me even today. This is something that I've only told a handful of people and it's something that I have yet to talk about publicly. When I was five years old, I was sexually abused by someone close to my family. That changed me so much. I became withdrawn and that event haunted me so much growing up. Maybe I was just too young to really fathom the event, or maybe I just forgot as a defense mechanism, but thank God for, for, whatever, for whatever it was. Going to elementary school was fun to me. I remember some aspects of kindergarten and first grade. I, very early, etched the name as a classroom artist and that I had a major love for Pokemon. In first grade, I won the portrait of the year for the entire school and it still hangs there till this day. In second grade, I remember having a girlfriend. I think her name was Elena. In second grade, the school made a quilt and I was my classroom rep for winning an art contest by drawing the Pokemon Scizor. I designed our classroom's patch. Before third grade, my parents got this super cool house built and I transferred schools to a school called Fishback. I actually loved it. That's where I met some of my closest friends at the time. I had a great group of friends at school and a great group of friends in the neighborhood. We played Pokemon and traded Yu-Gi-Oh cards a lot. It was so much fun. I also did karate and I was a freaking monster at it. I was number one in my class. Us, I mean kids in the neighborhood, used to fist fight a lot and I love whooping out my Taijutsu skills on them. <laughs> Bro, I used to have the most lit birthday parties. We basically lived for birthday parties as kids. Having all your friends come over, chilling, you know, playing video games, eating cake, getting presents was the highlight of each year. Fifth grade, I got in trouble for stealing some of my classmates' Yu-Gi-Oh cards. It was pretty much grounded for a month. It sucked so badly. My friends and I used to spend most of our time writing Dragon Ball Z fan flicks in our journals our teachers got us for uh, Christmas. Next was middle school. That's when the game really changed. In middle school, everything was so different. No uniforms, getting grades, lockers. Everyone started cussing and eating hot Cheetos out of the vending machine like it was going out of style. 
We weren't the big fish in the pond no more. We were literally what they were feeding on. I started playing the saxophone in sixth grade. I was so competitive, but at the same time, I hated my band teacher so much. One time, I got my cell phone stuck in my saxophone and I had to send it in to get my cell phone taken out. I can't say that I was ever bullied, per se, but I would say I got picked on by some individuals. I mean, everybody kind of does. Middle school was the first time where I really felt a sense of self. I remember, I remember there was this one dude that I've known since fifth grade, and I used to think he was so cool. I wanted to be just like him. I liked what I liked, but at the same time, I think it's natural for kids wanting to be accepted and loved by their peers. Seventh grade was cool. It was a great year because I was around a lot of my friends. I used to get the highest grade in my science class every grading term, but that's only because we used to finesse the hell out of the teacher. Cheating was a breeze, and me and my friends used to cheat so much. It was a lifestyle. High school was a big event in my life, and was pretty much like middle school, but to an extreme. In ninth grade, I was still a kid. I was growing into myself. That summer before high school, my parents forced me into doing marching band. I hated it so much. The hours were long, it was in the middle of the summer, so you know, you got dark as hell, and it was so hot. And my parents didn't even like picking me up and dropping me off to practice. I hated it so much, and I used to act up so <laughs> much. You guys don't even understand. I was a terror. The summer before 10th grade and the beginning of 10th grade was something else. That was when Drake dropped his uh, So Far Gone mixtape and jerking became popular. And that's what me and my neighborhood friends devoted our whole summers to. That's when I started learning and developing who I was. I started wearing skinny jeans, studded belts, and graphic tees just like everybody else. Boy, did I feel stylish as hell. Friendships start playing an important role in high school. I was a kid that never had a problem making friends. But I think knowing how to maintain friendships isn't something that we were that was really addressed to anyone um, when we were growing up. So when I grew up, I would lose and uh, grow out of friendships with people and not think anything of it. Memories of my sexual abuse as a kid start to surface in my head during that time. Not only that, but the winter break of my sophomore year had to be my darkest period of time in my life. I never told anyone about my sexual abuse until 10th grade. I told a friend from my neighborhood um, that was pretty close to me. He was honestly probably my first friend that it opened up to on a really personal level. The winter break of sophomore year led to the darkest moments in my life. That break, I made a friend that I connected to on such a deep level. He was so cool and we had all the same interests. This was the first time I felt like somebody really understood me. Everything changed when he became a terrible friend. He was a liar, he was so manipulative, and it was worse because some of the friends that I had for years wouldn't talk to me anymore. Maybe they felt like I left them, or maybe they were no longer interested. To this day, I'm not really sure, but all I know was that um, that brought some of the, my worst days. I felt completely and utterly alone. Our friendship was very up and down and everything was to an extreme. The only thing that was constant was my fragility, loneliness, and depression. I became really reclusive and I tried my hardest to avoid social situations. That's when my social anxiety started to bud. Lunch period was the hardest for me socially, so I used to skip lunch every single day for years to stay in the library and avoid everyone. During that time, my sexual abuse all made me question myself and my identity. It was the first time in life where I really started to grasp what was going on and start to question how it was, um, how it had impacted me to this point. This period is when I really got into Paramore. Ignorance taught me how to be strong when your friends treated you like crap. Brick by Boring Brick taught me that if someone is really for you, you will really feel it in your heart. It taught me how to evaluate friendships. Playing God gave me the power to flip the table on the people that had me feeling like crap and to point the finger right back at them. Paramore was truly a God-given miracle because their mu music helped me through every single thing. I 
can't stress how dark of a funk I was in. And somehow, they just happened to have a song about every single thing I was going through. Thank God. I mean, seriously, thank God I made some friends that were really supportive. It was a long and very difficult process, but they helped uplift me to where I was strong enough to get over those struggles. That time was so crucial into forming me into a confident, strong, loving, and forgiving person that I am today. That's about it for high school. Next was college. I went to the Art Institute of Indianapolis. It was pretty cool. My college experience was very different from everyone else's. The Art Institute isn't your typical school. The social aspect was lacking so hard. I always managed to get good grades, but my grades during my first quarter were great. I worked a lot during college. I had 16 credit hours and worked anytime from 50 to 55 hours a week at Domino's. I really didn't need the money, but I didn't want to be at home either. I eventually moved out the summer of 2014. A week after I moved out, I graduated with my associate's degree in graphic design, and shortly after that, that's when I met Paramore for the first time. It was so awesome. Jeremy loved my shirt, Taylor gave me a high five and thanked me for supporting them, and Haley gave me a hug when I started crying. Living on my own was so different. Shit was real. I never had a steady job during then, and I had to eventually move back in February 2015. I got in a car accident and totaled a car that I had for only a week. Things soon got better because I was offered an internship from Adidas and I started that in April. I finished up my internship and I killed it. During that time, it was really weird. I mean, weird in a really good way. God was telling me that my future was in California. Summer 2015, I just did my thing. School worked like usual. One day I was at school and we got this email asking if you dreamt of being famous and if you were uncontainable. It was a casting call for a show shooting in LA. I knew that this was meant for me. God told me that he had something in store for me coming and without a doubt I knew it was for me. Come to find out, I got one of four spots and I was flown out to LA for the web series called Uncontainable, the ultimate art challenge. And I got to work with a superstar YouTuber with over four, uh, with, oh, with over five million subscriptions, Connor Franta. Me and my team, AI West, spent a week on set in LA with a full production team, with a producer and everything. We spent all of September and half of October to prepare our big live, for our big live competition to make the ultimate art installation out of a 20 by 20 shipping container. After 13 grueling hours in the hot Austin, Texas sun, my team was victorious and we won the competition. The whole experience was the absolute greatest thing and that's when I set a new goal to move out to LA and work my way into becoming a star in the media business. So if you have any connects, uh, hit me up. Um, the email, my email is down in the description down below. You can tweet me, Instagram me, whatever you gotta do to contact me. Soon after, Reality set back in and I had to resume my work in college life. I got so tired of college. Thankfully, I got an email from Adidas wanting to interview me for a temp position. Especially during the high, especially during the high of the events I had going in LA, I had the best and most positive attitude and absolutely crushed the interview and got the job. I was ecstatic, no more slamming pizzas and frying fries for me. It was an easy life from now on. I launched my YouTube channel in January 2016 and had some great and exciting times with you guys. A month later, I got an even better job with Adidas and was hired full time. That year I got flown out to so many events like South by Southwest and Comic Con and I got to vlog it all for you guys. I also got to do amazing things like making artwork for Logic, meeting huge social media influencers, meeting fans, and I also held my first sponsored event at GameStop for Pokemon Sun and Moon. That pretty much brings us to today, where every day I'm just grinding on YouTube and saving money to move to LA and pursue my dreams of being a huge social media influencer and getting on somebody's TV show. So if you're watching this, you have any connections or you got the power to get me on a TV show or to hire me somewhere in LA so I can move there, hit me up, email in the description. 
My whole life, people and events were telling me who I am, but now I'm a strong and self-loving 23 year old. I've done great things in the past and I will do even greater things in my future. I'm so blessed to have you guys on this journey and I know we're gonna do some awesome and cool things and impact some people's lives for the better. And for any of you out there that are like me, any of you that are victims of sexual abuse, emotional abuse, or feel marginalized in any way, this part is just for you. Don't let anyone or anything tell you who you are. You decide who the hell you are. You can be anyone you want to be. You will overcome anything. Again, you guys, thanks again for all the support. If you have any questions for me or you have any words of encouragement, um, leave them down in the comments down below. You can also tweet me. Um, my Twitter is at ZagiceWesley. Um, at me on Snapchat. And then you can also see me in some of my artwork on Instagram. Um, also, I ask if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Please take the time to hit that like button. And also subscribe uh, for more awesome content. I regularly put out awesome content on here. Again, you guys, my name is Wesley Lindsay. I hope you enjoyed my, my small little life journey. This is just the surface. This is just the tip of the iceberg. And I know we have a bright future in store for the both of us. And um, yeah, have a great day. <laughs> Bye.